God bless you all. This is Pastor Eric Morgan coming uh, to you live here in the great city of Salt Lake City, Utah. I've got some very special guests here with me today and just looking to talk to somebody and share the good news of the gospel of the kingdom of God. Amen. I hope you all are doing so great. Uh, I think uh, we've missed you guys for the last couple of weeks. So uh, this is our first time uh, in a couple of weeks uh, sharing with you here on Facebook Live. And we are excited and ready to share with you uh, some awesome news that is going to transform your life. Amen. So we're going to uh, just wait to see who's going to uh, join us today and connect with us uh, here on Facebook. Uh, so we'll just pause for a few moments and uh, just see who's going to uh, join us in our uh, conversation on today. The Lord uh, has done some wonderful things in our midst here today at church. We just uh, finished having a church service uh, just over an hour or so ago, and uh, just a tremendous presence of God was in the place, and uh, the word of God went forth, and the worship, the, the songs, and it, it was just a good service. And uh, to all of you who were there to support it, we just bless you and salute you for all that you do in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. We've got some, uh, some uh, announcements to make in just a moment, uh, primarily one announcement that we want to share with you, and it's coming up this week. Uh, if you've been watching my Facebook page any time in the last week or so, you know exactly what I'm going to share uh, but I'm excited to you. And uh, one of the deacons in our church, uh, Deacon Dominic Hunter, uh, they're going to be sharing with you guys in just a few moments. Uh, hello, Kathy. God bless you. Good to have you joining us. Uh, please, I, I just want to share that if you connect with us today, uh, you can begin sharing the video on your Facebook page even while the live viewing is going forth. You don't have to wait till the end of the uh, video to actually share it. Uh, at least I think I'm right about that. Uh, I think you can share it in the midst of the uh, conversation that we're having. So Kathy, if you can, you can share the video uh, with the folks on your Facebook page right now. So you don't have to wait until uh, we complete the video and then share it later. You can actually do it right now. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, don't ask me because <laughs> I, I don't really know how to do it myself, but I was told that uh, by some people that know a whole lot more about technology than I do. So uh, if you want to share it right now, you can uh, connect uh, other people on your page uh, to what it is that we're sharing and what we're doing at this moment. Uh, so we'll just give it a couple more moments, as we always do, for other people to come on and, and connect with us. Maybe they're not thinking that we're here today because we missed the last couple of weeks because other things have been going on. Uh, but we are here today and excited and elated to have this opportunity to, have this opportunity to share uh, something great with you. Uh, Dee and uh, uh, Deacon Hunter, you want to say hello uh, to our live viewing audience? Hello, everyone. Hello, Praise everybody. God. Praise God. Amen. We're, we're going to be talking about uh, the kingdom of God in just a few moments. But before we do that, we just want to share from our hearts uh, that we are praying and interceding for all of our brothers and sisters in Puerto Rico, in Mexico, in Houston in uh, Louisiana, uh, and in other parts of the United States and in other parts of the world. We have been praying uh, and interceding on your behalf, praying and trusting that God will uh, supply all of your needs, uh, praying that uh, you'll find a way to uh, restructure your lives and, and get all the resources that you need to rebuild your lives and, and in a sense, uh, start all over again. I can only imagine how difficult that process must be uh, to, you know, basically lose your home and lose everything that is familiar to you. And then having to uh, perhaps move to a different city or a different state to just kind of start your life all over. That's, that's a tremendous process. 
and uh, we just want you to know that we love all of you guys, that we're praying for you, and, uh, and again, just trusting that everything that you need uh, to take care of yourselves and your families, uh, that those resources will come quickly uh, into your lives. Uh, so we as a church, we're praying for you, and I'm sure there are many others uh, all over the world who are interceding on your behalf as well. Uh, but I do want to say this, that not only do we have people suffering here in the United States, particularly in the southern part, uh, but I also want you to understand that there are people all over this globe who are suffering. They may not get the publicity or the media uh, uh, attention that we get here in the United States, but there are people in other parts of the world, believe me, who are going through uh, just horrible things uh, experiencing crisis in a way that you just would not imagine. And so not only do I want you to pray with us concerning those who are suffering here in the United States, but let's come together in a prayer of agreement and in a spirit of faith to pray for the world because God is concerned about the world and everybody uh, who is in this world. Uh, he's concerned about humanity as a whole, and so must we, because we have brothers and sisters that we may not ever see or may not ever hear about who are going through horrible trials and tests and tribulation and uh, just tremendous uh, suffering uh, is something that they're experiencing. And so I just want to, again, challenge all of you to not only limit your prayers here to the borders of the United States, but extend your prayers uh, to all of humanity all over this world. You know, when Jesus came, he did not come to die just for Americans or just for uh, Hispanics, but he came to die for all of humanity, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we want to have a global view and we want to be compassionate uh, to all of our brothers and sisters uh, around the four corners of this earth. Amen? Amen. So if you could do that with us, we would certainly appreciate it because I have an opportunity from time to time to speak to those who are in other parts of the world uh, that you may not hear about and they are going through tremendous uh, trials and tests as well. Praise God. So again, uh, we need your prayer support. We want you to understand uh, that prayer changes things. And, uh, and again, we're just trusting that God, uh, through people, uh, will meet the needs of other people as we continue to uh, trust God for better days ahead. Amen. Well, my brothers and sisters, we also have Pastor Lillian Montez, who's uh, one of the associate pastors here at our church. God bless you. Good to have you joining us. Uh, we're going to get right into our message today. And the subject that we want to speak to you from is entitled, Get Into the Kingdom. Get Into the Kingdom. Now, before I get into that, I want to make this announcement. I want to make this announcement uh, and we started making this announcement a couple weeks or so ago, and you can see the post on my Facebook page, but we are having what we call a Kingdom Power Conference that's going to be coming up this week and just four or five days away. It starts on September 28th, and we're going to finish on October 1st, September 28th through October 1st. It starts this Thursday night at 7 p.m., here in the sanctuary at Living Waters International Church, located here in the very heart of Salt Lake City. Uh, the address to our church is 355 West Bugatti Street, Suite 300. Again, that's in Salt Lake City, and everybody is invited. It makes no difference who you are, where you come from, what mistakes you've made. Uh, makes no difference what your ethnicity is. None of that matters to us. The doors of our church are open wide, and we want to invite all of you to come out because it's going to be powerful. It's going to be life-changing. 
We have a very special guest who's going to be ministering in the house of God uh, throughout the conference. His name is Pastor Emmanuel Bossman Asante. He's the senior pastor of Praise Harvest Community Church in Atlanta, Georgia. To be more specific, it's in the city of Roswell, Georgia. Uh, and he has a powerful ministry there. He and his wife, Sally, are the pastors of that church. And we're so grateful to have this opportunity to have him come all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, to deposit into our lives the word of God and anything else that the Lord has in store for us. So, again, you don't want to miss this event. It's going to be epic. It's going to be life transforming. In fact, our theme for this year's conference is called transformation. Transformation. You're getting ready to be transformed. In fact, you're already going through a, a period of transformation. God is changing things within you, shifting things all around you and within you because he has a greater plan for your life and you're getting ready to tap into something that your eyes haven't seen, your ears haven't heard, neither have even entered in your heart, but you're being renewed in the spirit of your mind and things are changing. You are being transformed, whether you know it or not. Because sometimes God will start doing some things in your life without your permission. And he'll start doing some things and shifting things in your life without your approval because he's God. He doesn't have to check with us. He doesn't have to check with anybody else. He is Lord of all. And so I want you to come to this conference in a spirit of expectation that things are changing, that you are being transformed to the highest version of yourself that God is lifting you, that he is shifting your identity, bringing you into a greater reality of the power that lives in you through Jesus Christ. I'm already excited just talking about it. Uh, we had a, a, a message here today that kind of served as a precursor for the conference that's coming later this week. And I spent some time talking a little bit about the kingdom because I want our congregation to be aware of it uh, we talk about it all the time, but we're we're using this week to really uh, focus in on the concept of the kingdom of God. And as I stated earlier, I've got D, I've got Deacon uh, Dominic Hunter here with me to talk about the kingdom of God. And again, our subject today is get into the kingdom. Get into it. If you're not in, in it right now, get into it. You have to get into it. You have to get immersed into it because the kingdom of heaven comes with a culture. There is a culture that comes with God's kingdom. You can be in church and not really be into the kingdom. Or you can be a citizen of the kingdom and not know what the kingdom of God is. And so that's why we want to take this week and take this time and this opportunity to share some things with you, some principles, some uh, concepts with you to help you to come into a greater understanding and a greater reality of the kingdom of God. Well, D, uh, Deacon Hunter, as I just stated, we shared a message earlier today uh, about the kingdom of God. Uh, we're, we're moving into our conference this week. I know you're excited about it. I know you're excited about it. Tell us, what is it that you're, you're sensing in your spirit? What is God saying to you specifically about the kingdom of God? I'll start with you, Dee. Hey Amen. Um, yes, Pastor, I'm totally excited about it. Um, you, the theme of it is transformation. Yes. Uh, and I, I need to look a little bit deeper for that, tra for that definition of transformation mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. because I am definitely feeling that in my spirit, and in mm -hmm. my atmosphere, um, in, in my home, at my job, here in church. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just, it's just uh, God's kingdom is it's just to gain a better understanding. Mm -hmm. That's why it's like I want to dig deeper. Mm -hmm. I, wanna, I want to know more. So I'm just hungry. I'm hungry to mm -hmm. know uh, more about the kingdom of God yes. and um, to be a servant in the kingdom of God and a citizen of the kingdom of God and to know uh, what works, That's you right. know, That's right. That's <laughs> going right. into uh, this new season in, in my life. Um, right. I have to know what works because I want to work the work, right? right? Just That's like you right. work the word, you got to work the work of the That's kingdom. Right. And That's so right. I'm definitely very excited to have to be in this conference, um, just to be able to just eat. I feel like I'm eating at a table of kings and queens and Amen. just going to um, 
to really gain a better understanding uh, of who I am in, in the kingdom and what I need to be doing to enhance the kingdom of God. That's right. That's right. We appreciate that. Deacon Hunter, tell us what, what are you sensing in your spirit about this message of the kingdom? What is God specifically saying to you at this time? Well, that, that I uh, need to have the mind of Christ, meaning mm. uh, I need to understand what the Word is saying, not mm. just know about the Word, not just be reading the Word, mm. but understand the Word and to That's be right. in unity with the, with the whole church, not just part of the church, and, uh, and not to, you know, call myself uh, any certain religion like... Baptist or atheist or not atheist but mm -hmm. not Baptist or Pentecostal and not not name myself but but to call myself a believer that's right because that, that's the whole church we're, we're all should be believers and when one accord unity that's right that's right, mm -hmm. that's right. I, I certainly appreciate uh, what both of you have shared because what they are sharing is actually the culture of the kingdom of God this is uh, what God has given to us in his kingdom. When you talk about things like unity, when you talk about being renewed in your mind and, and gaining a deeper understanding, that's what we have to do in order for us to really operate efficiently within the kingdom of God. Because I'm going to say some things to you that you may not uh, really receive too well. It may take you a moment to digest it and to really uh, get it into your spirit uh, because uh, when you talk about the king that is born out of religion, you're not even talking about church denomination. Uh, you're not talking about uh, race per se. When you talk about the kingdom, you are talking about a concept that is so much bigger than religion. It is so much bigger than church. It is so much bigger than a denomination. And we're not preaching against your denomination or uh, the church that you belong to. But I want you to understand that the kingdom of God is bigger than your denomination. It is bigger than the church that you go to. And we love Living Waters International. But the kingdom of God is not limited to Living Waters International. It's not limited to me. It's not limited to D, or, nor is it limited to uh, Deacon Hunter. The kingdom of heaven uh, is bigger than this world. It's bigger than the planet that we live on. It is so much bigger than politics and education and all of the systems of this world. And when you get born again in your spirit, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're not just brought into church. You're brought into a kingdom. You are literally brought into a kingdom, and that kingdom is the kingdom of God. Now, I really want you to grab hold of that because we get so used to church that we lose sight of the kingdom. We get so used to the routine of going to church week after week and uh, just learning scripture and that sort of thing. But you can be in church. You can learn scriptures and still not be aware of the kingdom of God that you have been placed in by God's grace and by his spirit. And so that's why, again, we're coming today to talk to you about the kingdom of God because it's a larger concept. It's a bigger concept than what you think it is. And uh, we're just taking this time to share this with you because you're not just called to be a church member. Amen. You're called to be a kingdom citizen on this earth. And you are anointed and ordained by God to represent his kingdom not just your church or your organization or even yourself. Mm -hmm. You have been ordained by God to represent the kingdom of God on this earth, on this planet. The spirit of God lives inside of you because that spirit is there inside of you to bring forth the kingdom of God here on this earth. And I want to say to you that maybe the systems of this world are truly failing us. Because God is trying to bring us back to the system of his kingdom. God wants us to get off of the systems of the world and get into the system of his kingdom, which came to us through Jesus Christ. Now, if you will study the scriptures closely, especially uh, if you look at the, the early portion of Matthew chapter 3, you'll begin to see that John the Baptist, who served as the forerunner, of Jesus Christ. He came on the scene to minister 
uh, God's plan and God's vision to the world before Jesus came. So he serves as the forerunner. And, and the message that he shared is so critical for us to understand. The message that he shared was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. He said repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And if you follow his ministry, it was the only message that he preached. It was the only message that he shared. And this is the message, my brothers and sisters, that we have to get back to. That God is calling us back to his kingdom, his system of operation, getting back into the mind of God. Because when we tap into the mind of God, we tap into the kingdom of God. We come into a deeper realm, a deeper uh, revelation of who God is and what he has called us to do. But if you limit your faith only to the religious world, you actually leave the mind of God. And you leave the kingdom of God because, again, it's a much bigger concept. It's a much bigger idea that God has revealed to the world. So, again, John the Baptist came preaching, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He, that word repent doesn't mean to just simply say, God, I'm sorry for sinning against you. That is a part of repenting. But we have only been taught in the church that to repent means to confess our sins. But in this particular portion of scripture, the word repent is not limited to you just being sorry about sins that you have committed against God. In fact, the real definition of the word repent, check this out. It means to change your mind. Mm -hmm. It means to shift in how you're thinking. It means to do a 180 degree turn. It means that you have to shift in how you process. So if you, if you follow what John the Baptist was saying more carefully, he's basically saying, change your mind. Change how you think because the kingdom of heaven is here. You have to shift in how you've been thinking, how you've been processing things because the world around us is deceiving us. It is lying to us. It is not designed to give us the truth. You have to shift in consciousness. You have to shift in your thinking. There has to be a paradigm shift that takes place in your way of thinking. That the processes that you use to, to process information has to be, it has to be resurrected. You have to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and get off of the systems of this world. The systems of the world, if you haven't noticed, they're failing us. Our governmental systems, they're failing us because they were never designed to sustain the people of God in the first place. What was designed to sustain us is God's kingdom, God's ways of doing things. We have to look at the systems around us and begin to challenge them through, through, through bringing forth new thoughts, new ideas, new concepts. Because again, everything around us is not working. Our educational system is not working. The governmental systems are not working. The financial systems are not working. Why? Because God is saying, come back to me. Come back to the kingdom. In my kingdom, I supply every need. In my kingdom, I have a financial system for you. In my kingdom, I supply your emotional needs, your, your physical needs. I show you who you really are. And church, we've got to get back to the kingdom of God. I don't want to take over the conversation, but I, I'm so fired up about this. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom, the kingdom of God, the revelation of the kingdom, the understanding of God's kingdom, because again, when you get saved, when you get born again, you're not just born into a physical church. You are born into a kingdom. Yes. I don't care where you are in the world, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, mixed. I don't care who you are. If you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are a king and a priest on this planet. That you have been born again, ignited by the spirit of God, quickened by the spirit of God to usher in God's kingdom on this planet. That's why we're here. But if we get stuck in church and religion 
and the concepts of the world and we don't renew our minds according to what God has said to us in his word, we will be limited. We will be limited in everything that we've been called to do. And God came in the person of Jesus Christ to set us free, to liberate us, to give us freedom, to be who we really are. We are the sons of God, the sons of God. That speaks to position, that we are called, that we are anointed to establish God's kingdom. Not just the black church, the white church, the Hispanic church, the kingdom of God. It's so much bigger. Talk to us, D. Tell, tell us. <laughs> tell us. What's well, on your mind? Well, earlier you were talking about the division, you know, mm -hmm. how, and, and, and Deacon had mentioned it too, uh, talking about the different uh, Baptists and things yes, like, like yes, that. Yes. And, and you, I mean, I'm glad you make that disclaimer that you're not trying to tear anyone down or trying to say anything negative, mm -hmm. you know, about having those type of uh, um, uh, titles. But think about that division. You know, uh, we, we, we are to be united. And it's like, w once you have that, that label on you, and, and, and I, I haven't been in church all my life, but um, I've been in church long sweating. enough to know that there is a big difference. There's certain um, sects in church that have, um, that where you can't, you, you feel like you can't be yourself. Right. You feel like you can't even praise God. You right. know what I'm saying? Because of their rule is, you know, we mm -hmm. don't clap our hands here. Or, you know, right, or, right. Or, or, yeah, right. we don't worship, you know, and it's like, oh, hold on. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what can I do? There's always a lot of can'ts, can'ts, can'ts in religion. And can't, can't, can'ts don't make a, don't give you that freedom to be who you are in God and and dealing with the kingdom it's like I know that there is freedom in the kingdom yes God God also he wants order you know he wants things to be decent and in order also mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. he doesn't want you to, to feel like you have to be um, smothered or feel mm -hmm. like you have to be put in this box um, you, you mentioned about knowing who you are you know yeah. I mentioned that earlier too um, just tapping into the kingdom of God man it's like mm -hmm. I just I want to complete, and I say this on the air, I want to complete what God has put in me for his kingdom. I, right. That is a desire of mine. Now, he didn't say it was going to be easy. Mm -hmm. He did not say that. But he did say it can be done. And so, and we mentioned about seeking, seeking ye first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and his righteousness, and all these things can be added onto us. To have that, like, that, in that statement, the beginning to seek the kingdom, that lets you know right there that, that it's super important. It's mm -hmm. super important to seek after it. It's super important to, to look after it, to, to find it. You know, mm -hmm. he says to, to, to um, I don't want to quote it, but to, to, to knock and it shall be open, seek and it shall be, and ye shall find. You have right. to look, you have to search. Right. Right. You know, I think sometimes we get so complacent, um, especially ones who are not uh, connected to God. And, and, and being connected to God does not mean that you have to be stale or have to be some type of, you know, holy, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. just this mm -hmm. stiff mm -hmm. person. I think we have a lot of misconceptions um, in knowing God and knowing the kingdom. People get scared and they run away right. and they say, well, I don't want, I don't want that. I don't want to hear none of that. But really, I, I tell you honestly, it was the best thing that I've ever done in my life was to 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 find out who God truly was and and growing up in a, in a religious atmosphere as mm -hmm. I did it really kept me back mm -hmm. it kept me um in this uh I felt like I was just being in a lot of darkness mm -hmm. there's a lot mm -hmm. of darkness mm -hmm. you know and light runs out mm -hmm. darkness and I'm telling you the kingdom of God is light mm -hmm. and and so don't be afraid um this this is a strong subject I mean you mentioned it's it earlier it's, it's, it's like you, you. you have to shift that mind because yes. you're like you know but it's good to be challenged and and, and whenever you're not challenged it's like you're just kind of laying there dead you know so challenge yourself you know challenge yourself and what is and what is being mm -hmm. said today to, to learn more about this kingdom that's right because the, the truth of the matter is is that if we if we need to see a true representation of what unity is and what the love of god is it it really should come from we as believers because we have access to the kingdom of God and we have access to God's divine truth that is revealed to us through his word. So if, if we need a picture of unity, it should come from us. Amen. But in order for that to happen, you have to renew your mind. That's why John the Baptist said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then if you look at Matthew 4, then Jesus comes on the scene. 
after John the Baptist with the same message. And he says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So this must be a critical message for Jesus to even come after John the Baptist to share the same thing. So again, both of them are saying, change your mind. Change how you think. Don't get sucked into the philosophies of the world. Yeah. Don't get sucked into the concepts or the customs or traditions of the world. You want to shift in your thinking through the spirit of God so that God can enlighten you. So that God can illuminate your way of thinking and you begin to really see the world and for what it is around you. Because if you don't renew your mind, you can be born again and still live in darkness, still walk in darkness, still living underneath your spiritual rights and privileges because you won't know who you are. You won't know what you possess because when you receive Christ, you didn't just receive salvation. That's very important. But what came with that salvation was a kingdom. The kingdom has been given unto you. You have access to the kingdom of God. So when the systems of the world fail us, and they are, you still have access to the kingdom of God, which will never fail. Because God's word will never fail. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. The flower fades and the grass withers, but the word of the Lord shall stand forever. That's what God has given to us in his kingdom. And again, I say this to you, maybe the systems of the world are not working because they were never designed to. We, we're supposed to operate according to the kingdom of God. And the systems of the world have, have to become subject to the system of the kingdom of God. And that's what you and I have been called to do, to infiltrate the systems of the world to bring enlightenment, to bring truth, to bring revelation, to bring order, to bring alignment to the kingdom of God so that we can see what God had in mind before the foundation of the world. But we've got to get out of this church attitude, this church mentality, this religious mentality. And again, I'm not preaching against your religion. I'm, pre I'm preaching against the spirit of religion because religion alone will blind you. And it will blind you from the truth. Do you not know that the Pharisees and the Sadducees were the religious leaders during the times of Jesus? And yet they did not have the revelation of who Jesus really was because they were blinded by religion and church and scriptures that they did not have the revelation of. Do you not understand that that still exists today? That we can't truly see the kingdom because we've been blinded by what we think we know. Do you understand that we must come to a place of resurrection mm, in our gosh. thinking, in our mentality, yes. that we have to see that there should be no such thing as racism or this people group over here and that people group over there and this denomination over here and that denomination over there. And we've got all these barriers going on that should not exist, not in the kingdom of God, not in the kingdom. So we have to get back to the kingdom. We have to get back to the kingdom because that's where our power is. That's where our lifeline is. That's what God commanded us to do. Oh, yes. Deacon Hunter, talk to us. You jump in here. Yeah, I just Tell want us. to say we're supposed to, we're, we're the church. We're supposed to shine. We can't shine if we, if we don't change our mind. That's right. We're supposed to change the world for say, God. Let, let me say that again. I like what you just said. Okay. You can't shine until you change your mind. Right. I like that. I'm going to use that in my sermon next week. You cannot shine until you change your mind. I like that. Go ahead. And see, when we change our mind according to the word of God, which is a kingdom way, then it changes our action. Then, yes. then we can change the world like yes. we're supposed to. Because yes. we're supposed to change the world for God, not That's for right. us, for God. See, religion changes the world for man. Yes. But the kingdom way changes the world for God. And that's what we're here to do. We're here for God. That's, the, that's why he created us. That's right. We are here for God. We're not here for ourselves. Mm -mm. We are here for God. But if we're here for God, what is the assignment? Mm. Come on. That's right. what, what, is, what is the mandate? Yeah. What is it that we're supposed to be doing? Mm. I'm here to tell you we're supposed to be enforcing the kingdom of God here on this earth. 
But, but we can't enforce it nor establish it if we don't know what it is. Right. If we don't understand how it works, how it operates. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 6, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. In other words, make seeking the kingdom your number one priority. Mm, that's right. Uh, learn what the kingdom of heaven is. And then operate the principles that are within that kingdom. And there we will find life. There we will operate in truth. There we will begin to co-partner with God in the earth. And we will see more manifestation of his glory on earth. So my question to you is, are we more concerned about building our own kingdoms? Or are we concerned about establishing God's kingdom? Because that's what we've been anointed to do. That's what we have been ordained by God to do. It is not about our denomination. It is not about our individual churches. It is about a bigger picture than that. It is about a bigger idea. It is about God's kingdom. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 that a son has been given to us. And that a son has been given. And upon uh, his shoulders have been given a government. And it's speaking in Revelation uh, and speaking in reference to Jesus Christ. So the Bible says that Jesus has been given a government and that government has been placed upon his shoulders. Well, that government is not the government of the United States. It's not the government of, of uh, Europe. It's not the government of London, England. It's not the government in this physical world. It's a kingdom government. It is the government of the kingdom of God. And that's what Jesus came to offer to us, the government of the kingdom of God, because worldly governments will always fail us. They will always let us down. They are not designed to be our savior. We have to find out the government of the kingdom of God, the system by which God operates. Learn the mind of God, the ways of God, the principles of God, and begin to incorporate those into our lives. And there we have the kingdom. There we have the kingdom manifesting on earth in politics, in education, in business, in arts, in entertainment, in every sphere of life. The kingdom must be revealed. That's why God is calling you afresh. That's why God is calling you from the background to the forefront. Because he's looking for somebody that he can use. That he can send into those arenas of life. To affect it with the kingdom of God. But you've got to know what it is. You've got to know the assignment. You've got to know the mandate from heaven. Even when the disciples asked Jesus uh, to teach us how to pray. Jesus, he said, this is how you pray. This is the model for prayer. He says, when you pray, say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Notice, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come on earth. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You're trying to go to heaven, and heaven's trying to come to you. Mm. You're trying to escape the place, and God is trying to come where you are. And he wants to come where you are through you. He wants to manifest his kingdom through you. But you've got to learn the culture of the kingdom. You've got to get immersed into it. You've, you've got to become a kingdom citizen, a kingdom man, a kingdom woman. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's so much bigger than what we've made it. It's so much bigger. It's so much bigger. When you see the kingdom, you see God's love. You see his vision, his plan for the world. You see that he loves everybody. You see that, that he's got a plan for us all collectively and individually. And it's a great plan. But we have to get back to the kingdom of God. All you'll see in this world are two kingdoms. The kingdom of Satan and the kingdom of God. That's all that exists. And all citizens of the planet are operating under those two kingdoms, whether you know that or not. I'm not saying that to uh, make anybody angry, but it's the truth. It's only two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. When they accuse Jesus of casting out devils through the power of Beelzebub, he says Satan's kingdom is not divided. 
So even Jesus spoke of Satan's kingdom. And we also know that God has his own kingdom. So there are only two kingdoms that exist in the world, but these two kingdoms are at odds with one another. They will never collaborate together. They are not meant to be married together. Mm. It will never happen. You are either a citizen that brings light or darkness. and You have to decide whose side you're going to be on. Are you going to be one that represents life and light or one that represents darkness? You have to make the choice. I have chosen to be a citizen of the kingdom of God, and I want to reap all the benefits of that and enjoy the life that we have living in the kingdom. Amen. Praise God. I have dual citizenship. I'm an American citizen, and I'm also uh, a citizen of the kingdom of God. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful thing to be born again, to be born again, to have his spirit living inside of me. And to know that his kingdom lives in me. So I don't have to be confined to the four walls of the church to reveal who God is. Wherever I go, he's with me. Wherever I go, I'm the church. I'm the kingdom. I represent him. I'm an ambassador for Jesus Christ. And so are you. Wherever you go, wherever you find yourself, you're called to represent the kingdom. We are kings and priests unto God. You are somebody. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, talk to us. <laughs> talk to us. My pastor I told fire. you, I he told you I'm excited <laughs> about this. Oh, Deacon, D, Deacon, or I'll take it over. No, that's, <laughs> no I, want you, I want you to, to elaborate on the kingdom being within us. Yes, yes. You had mentioned that you actually ended with that um, today in service. Can yes. you give us a little bit um, more insight on that, please? The kingdom of God is within you. Yes. Through Jesus Christ, through you accepting him as your Lord and Savior, because when you receive him, you receive uh, the spirit of God and all of who God is. It comes to live inside of you. And if God has a kingdom, then wouldn't he give you that if that's a part of who he is? Mm -hmm. If he's going to give you the full package of salvation, wouldn't he give you the fullness of it? Wouldn't he give you all the benefits that come with salvation? That if he's a kingdom and if he's going to make me his son and if he's going to make you his daughter, then wouldn't he give me as an inheritance that same kingdom? Would he not give me access to it? Would, 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 he, would he hold back the good stuff from me? Of course not. So because he loves me so much, he's saying, I'm going to give you what's mine. And most importantly, I'm going to give you me. But, but what comes with me is my kingdom. And it's right there living inside of you. You're looking for God to come out of the sky somewhere. And, and I'm telling you, the kingdom is right there in you. You're looking outside of you for revelation and understanding. And everything you need has already been deposited right there in your spirit. And I know Jesus is coming. But we don't know where or when or the, the Bible doesn't even tell us the location by which he will be found. But he did say, but that kingdom is within you. It's within you. And you're looking off somewhere. You're looking to other people, to other things, uh, the systems of the world. And what you need has already been deposited right there in your human spirit, in the person of the Holy Spirit. Because salvation brings in the kingdom of God. You are now a citizen of the royal family of the kingdom of God. You are royalty. You are royalty, black people who are born again, white people who are born again, Hispanic people who are born again, mixed people who are born again, Asian people who are born again. People that have accepted the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, you are royalty. Now, now, if you don't know that, the enemy will take advantage of you in this life. And you will become subject to the very systems of this world because you lack an understanding of your true identity. And there are many people that are in the church that they are born again, they speak in tongues, they've been baptized in every name imaginable, and, and we still don't know who we are. Still don't know who we are. Because 
we must repent. Not just saying, God, I'm sorry. Yeah. Repent in the truest sense of the word. Change how you think. Change how you think. Change how you're looking at it. Change your view, your perspectives through the word of God. And by the spirit of God. That's what we're saying. Go ahead. Dean. No, I was just going to say, I remember God giving me a revelation uh, quite some time ago. And he was telling me there is no color in the kingdom. Mm -mm. Uh, mm -mm. Because we, we look at things in such a separation mm -mm. all the time. I mean, growing up, you think mm -mm. looking at things, separation. Oh, you can't play with this type of child. I'm sure mm -hmm. being down mm -hmm. south, mm -hmm. it was like that. You know, you can't, you can't play with this, t t this type of child. Or you can't do this. You can't do that. And it's like, it's, it's so close-minded the way the, the world is. It just mm -hmm. wants you to keep to continue to be closed minded. But with the with, with, with the shifting of the mind, um, it also will help you to be more clear and just clarification of what it is that you're doing in this world. Yes. You know, we, we, we were just not born just because. Mm. And I think a lot of times we, we have that understanding um, we just have a misunderstanding and we've been taught wrong. Mm -hmm. We've been taught um, more so about self and, and, mm. and even some, some preachers, they'll preach about themselves. You know, I remember sitting up in a ministry and he always talked about golf and stuff. I don't care about no golf. I, <laughs> I need to know what's going on in my life. I need to know how to change. I need to know how to shift. You know, mm -hmm. I need to know, uh, deal with the transformation because I have a destiny. I have a purpose yes. and I desire to, to get there, you know? And so, and so sometimes we, we can sit under, up under the wrong ministry and I'm sorry to bring this up, but it's a truth to where we are just dry and and it's just nothing going on and 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 the kingdom is not even being taught you know and it's just it's like a de deception and it will harm us it, it harms us it harms our spirits you know um you also mentioned about well, well god said you cannot be lukewarm you either you are either one or the other mm -hmm. you have to you have to understand that you mentioned about the the, the two the two systems two kingdom the kingdom of satan and the kingdom of god well, sometimes you have to reevaluate and look at yourself and say, which kingdom am I working for? That's because right. it That's is. Right. And you, you see it. I mean, we right. watch the movies. You see it. I think about Star Wars. You had Luke and you had, what's his name? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, his dad. Darth um, Vader. Darth Vader. Yeah, yeah. You know? And, 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 and dealing with Darth Vader, I mean, he was the, the king of darkness. Mm -hmm. and, and Luke, although Luke was his son, he was the king of like light. You know, he was mm -hmm, he was the one that's mm -hmm. supposed to bring in the the new Jedi's and what's it actually slay. That's right. And so I always look at that movie in a spiritual way because right. it's real. That's right. It's real. That's right. And and I, you know and just 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 thinking about um, dealing with that mind control is it's really like a mind control. There's so much going on in this world right now. So much. And Pastor, you mentioned about getting back to, because yes, it was presented to us at, mm -hmm. at one time. It might not have been in this era of our lives right mm -hmm. now, but it was presented on this earth, in this world mm -hmm. at one time. And we have to get back to that, because I guarantee that's what's going to help us continue to move forward and to be able to 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 receive whatever it is that God has for us on this earth. That's right. I, I don't know if there's ever going to be a, a time, I, I feel in my spirit sometimes, there's going to be a time that, that God's going to do something that we're going to have to come together. He's going to That's force right. us to come together. That's right. You know, and it's like you're going to have to choose what, what, it, is, what it is. I mean, it talks about the, the, in the Bible uh, in, in Revelations mm -hmm. in, the, in the last days. And y'all, I'm trying to tell y'all, if you don't see it, if you're not feeling it in your spirit, these are the last days. Mm -hmm. And God is trying to bring back the kingdom of God on this earth to get that understanding. Because these are the last days. Jesus is coming back. And like my pastor said, you don't know, you don't, we, we don't know when or how, but it's, it's just, it's, it's in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's in the atmosphere. Now, now you said something that these are the last days. I want you to think about something. These are the last days. And if they really are, if, if they really are, and, and many scriptures speak to this fact, but if they really are the last days, then, then what are we doing? Yeah. And what are we supposed to be doing? Yeah, exactly. Because we're, we're, I'm telling you, we're not here to just sit back and wait for Jesus to come. No. Nope. <laughs> That's not what he told us to do. He said, occupy mm. until I come. Mm. So, so we're supposed to be laboring for him, getting the job done, establishing the kingdom. 
revealing to the world who he is. We're not just to be laid up in the cut waiting for yeah, Jesus yeah. to come just to get out of here. That's right. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be advancing his kingdom. Yes. And you mentioned something that we have to come together because in the real kingdom of God, there's no competition. There's no division. There's, there shouldn't be no hatred. There shouldn't be racism. All of these things that divide us, that is not the kingdom of God at all. It is not the kingdom of God. There, there shouldn't be distinctions between men and women, not in the kingdom of God. A woman can be just as anointed as a man. A woman can be filled with God's power just as a man. Paul said there's neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek in Galatians chapter 3. For we are all one in Christ Jesus. But we won't know that if we don't understand the kingdom. If, if we don't get our own minds out of it and be renewed by the spirit of our mind, according to God's word, we will be in the kingdom and not be able to recognize it, not really operate in the trueness of it. But that's what this is about, because some of us need to get back to the kingdom and some of us have never understood it in the first place. And so this could be a new concept to you that you're learning for the first time. And there's nothing wrong with that. Get all you can. Get the understanding so that you can be what God has anointed you to be in these last days. But I tell you, you will not be able to operate in a high level until you get the revelation of the kingdom of God and let that kingdom manifest in your heart. And in your spirit so that you can be in sync with that kingdom instead of opposing it and working against it. Because you can be in the kingdom and be working against it if you don't know what it is. If you don't know how to flow with it. If you don't know how to let go of your personal biases and your own issues and your own way of thinking. You've got to let it go. That's why Paul said in Romans 12 too, you've heard me quote this scripture many times and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove you've got to be renewed. And the way you be renewed is not to conform to the ways of the world, but to be transformed. By the renewing of your mind. You know how the, how the uh, caterpillar starts out crawling and then through a process, a metaphor, metaphorical process, he, he, uh, the caterpillar then, then metamorphoses into a butterfly. It starts out as a caterpillar, but then he's transformed. Yes. He's transformed. He's mm. totally changed mm. from the inside out. He's, he's changed. Mm. Now he's flying. Whole new creature. Mm -hmm. If any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. You, you're living out of your old mind, mm. your okay. old nature. You've got to shift. Yes. Mm. You've got to shift. Yes. You've got to shift. Stop being competitive. Stop uh, <laughs> creating division. It's, it's not the kingdom. It's not the kingdom. We must come in sync with his word and with what he has given us to do. Deacon Hunter, you tell us something before we go. Well, I just want to say, if uh, you are operating in the kingdom way, then uh, you're going to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power right. of the enemy, and nothing will by any means hurt you. Because we are in the last days. You can't play games with the enemy. That's right. And that scripture is in uh, Luke 10, 10, 19. That's right. And because uh, we are in the last days, you can't play games with the enemy. You, you got you're going to speak healing on yourself and who, whoever, whoever you come in contact right. with. Like Isaiah 54, 17 tells us by Jesus stripes, we are healed. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be healed. We are healed. You just got to have faith in that. If you're in the if you're operating in the kingdom way, you're going to have faith in that. That's and right. you're going to operate in love. That's right. Agape love, unconditional Amen. love. That's a Jesus kind of love. That's right. And if you don't understand what that kind of love is, re read 1 Corinthians 13. That's it. That's, That's the it. love yeah. chapter. That That's tell it. You, that, that tell you the kind of love we're talking about That's here. That's it. That's it. And that, my brothers and sisters, is the way of the kingdom. It is the way of the kingdom. I'm going to ask uh, Deacon Hunter to exit the, uh, the interview just for a minute. Oh, oh, Dee has to go first, so we'll let her go. And uh, Minister Pam Gordon, who's also one of our associate ministers, she's been listening in on the conversation. We're going to ask her to come in quickly to be a part of this. Pam, jump on in here. All right. 
Praise God. Uh, we're only going to keep you a few more moments, but I want to hear from Pam now because she's been listening in on this conversation. She's been jumping on the inside over there. I was <laughs> peeking over there, and she has something to share with us as well. What are you feeling about this message of the kingdom? I just feel the, the message of the kingdom is, is, is awesome. And, yes, I've been over there just excited um, because the fact of the transformation um, and that's what it is. You know, many of us have been in, some of us anyways, have been in Christ for a long time. And throughout the years, nobody really talks about the kingdom. They read the scripture. They'll, you know, they'll say the kingdom of heaven is, is at hand or, or seek ye first the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. But yet they never really go into what is it exactly right, that right. you're doing. And I used to question it all the time. And it's like seeking you first the kingdom. What does that mean? Get up and pray first? Right, no, right. it means more than that. Seeking yeah. his righteousness. Mm -hmm. And what is it about this, this God that you're searching after? Mm -hmm. You know, and learning who he is for yourself. You know, and, and knowing that if the kingdom of God is at hand, you said it this morning, mm -hmm. that the kingdom of God is at hand. It means he's here right now. Right now. That he's right now. That, that, that John the Baptist says he's right here. And then Jesus began to say, he, he spoke the same message. And he, while John was in prison, Jesus was saying the same thing. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. I'm right here. Right. And to the, to the degree, and it went further even when we went into Luke, and it says that the kingdom of God is within you and that just blew me away when i think about it because the kingdom of god is in earth and vessels yes you know and 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 he says it's right within you they're searching for it well where is it it's over here it's over there no wherever you are that's where it is wherever you are so for those who are new in christ even you now that you have accepted jesus christ you've accepted the kingdom within it behooves us to for those of us who teach to teach you who he is so that you'll know your benefits, your benefiting, your beneficial, mm -hmm. uh, your, your, your benefit package, should I that's say. It, that's it. And it's exciting to know that in Christ, you are free. You mm -hmm. learn what freedom is. It's a heart condition. It's a mind thing. Renewing your mind, how? By reading the word of God. Because mm -hmm. then he'll begin to explain who he is. And you'll find out that that's who you are. That's right. That's right. Bam, thank you so much for that. You, you know, you said so many powerful things. And I want to add on to what she was saying. You know, when you see the working of miracles uh, that Jesus operated in and even other men and women of God, I, I want you to understand that the working of miracles is not just a separate ministry all by itself. It's, it's only a manifestation of the kingdom of God that these are just natural things that should be happening because we are citizens of that kingdom. When you see people who are sick and, and they have all manner of diseases and healing comes to that person, it, it, it doesn't mean that we are to just start a healing ministry per se. And I'm not, I'm not speaking against healing ministry, but what I'm trying to help you to understand is that in the kingdom, healing is a part of the culture. Yes. It, it's a part of life. I, and, and that's what I want you to understand. The kingdom of God is not just, it's not a building. It's not a church organization. It's not an institution. It's not a physical government. Amen. It is the culture of God. It, it's a lifestyle. It's, it's the way we act, the way we talk, the way we move, the way we, the way we carry ourselves based on the revelation of who we are in God. Yeah. And, and it's the revelation of what we know already belongs to us as citizens of that kingdom. I'm proud to be an American, I tell you. But I'm even more proud to be a citizen yes. of the kingdom of God. Because when, it, when America is done and over with, that kingdom will always remain. Amen. It will always remain. I don't care who the president is. When that system fails, my citizenship in the kingdom of God is always intact. Yes. And it always remains. So everything you see around you, when it dissipates, when it crumbles, whatever the case may be, however it goes down, mm -hmm. when it's all said and done, the only thing that will remain Amen. will be the kingdom of Almighty God. Yes. And I just want to ask you, are you in that kingdom? All right. Have you become a citizen of that kingdom yes. through Jesus Christ? Pam, one last thing. Deacon Hunter, any last comment? And then we'll let you go. 
I just say learn, learn what it is to be in the kingdom. If you're already in it, get to know what it truly, truly is for your life and how um, it can, it's very beneficial because like you said, when all the other systems fail, it will still stand. That's it's your right. strong tower, it's That's still right. standing. That's right. Deacon, anything you yeah. want to leave? I just want to say, people? get the word of God, the Holy Bible in your heart, in your mind, and in your mouth, and, and keep uh -uh. it there. And make sure that you understand it. Yes. Amen. Again, this week, starting Thursday night, yes. September 28th, it will be our Kingdom Power Conference. September 28th through October 1st. I want to challenge everybody who's listening to me to do your best to get here, even if you're outside of the state. Amen. Amen. I know you've got some vacation days. <laughs> Praise God. Get on that plane, catch a bus, a train, get on a bicycle. <laughs> Make sure you get here. It's going to be hot. It's going to be epic. Yes. The power of God is going to take over this place, and you are going to be transformed. Hallelujah. You are going to be renewed in a supernatural way. Our theme is transformation, again, September 28th through October 1st here at Living Waters International, 355 West Bugatti Street, Suite 300, right here in the heart of the city. <laughs> As one of my old bishops would say, we're in the heart of the city where the people of the city are in its heart. Amen. Hey, God. Oh, praise <laughs> God. So we thank God for you. We're expecting you to be in the place. The doors will open at 6 p.m. for anybody that wants to come early and pray and meditate, whatever it is you need to do. We'll be here waiting for you, and the Holy Spirit will be waiting for you to be transformed. Yes. All right, we've got to go. Thanks to Pam and uh, Deacon Hunter and uh, Dee who uh, shared with us earlier. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you this week. Yes. God bless. <laughs>